Today, friends, I'm gonna show you a fantastic Tinkercad Snap Fit Lazy Susan, and I'm gonna give you a free file, so let's get cracking. It starts with the bit.ly Lazy Susan 2. So when you get to the template, of course, this is the project that I'm talking about right now. The tutorial is coming soon. It is set to copy and tinker. So don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. When you do this, you get an exact copy of my project. You can click on items, you can ungroup them, and you can learn how it's supposed to work. So this right here is built with the snap fit connector. If you've never seen it before, you can search for it by typing snap. And it gives you this piece right here that we are using to snap into this hole. Notice when you bring this out, it has got default parameters. Radius 5, mushroom offset, height, and slot offset. So this has been changed for the project we're doing. The shaft radius is 4, the offset is 0.5, the height is 8, and the offset is 0.2. If we move over to this part, we need to ungroup it because this was the hole. And check it out. This is the snap hole free spinning. We wanted this to be able to spin. Check those numbers. 4.58 and 0.2 again these numbers match so that those two go together since this one was set as a whole if we do shift select and control g we can group those and bam that is the spot that snaps into so now that you see how those work you can use them for all sorts of other projects so this piece right here, I have grouped them as four. Real quick, I will double click to go inside it. And what this is, is a set of sketches. I simply drew the sketch four times. If I double click again, we can get inside one. Notice they've mentioned the style strokes. These are fantastic down here. This right here is my sketch. If we double click on it, you can see that I've got straight lines and then I drew Bezier curves. If you have not worked with these before, I've got a ton of tutorials. I'll put those up there above so you can explore them. I will show you quickly. You can grab lines and move them. I'm going to do control Z. You can also grab points and make your shapes super custom. Also using epic Bezier curves as you make really fancy projects. You can also click up here and choose sketch features. There is a very slick tutorial. You can check all of these out at your leisure. Of course, once again, when you're done, hit continue sketch. And if you want my tutorials, look up here in the corner. I'm gonna click finish sketch. I'm gonna mention once again that these are six millimeter BB holes. I'll show you that in just a moment. I'm gonna click out here to finish the edit. I wanna show you a couple more things with these sketches. The first thing I'm gonna do is give myself a little more room. I'm gonna make this 400 by 400. If you are messing with the project, I recommend that you don't ever completely destroy it. You instead move off to the edges as you play with it. So if I do Control D, I can move this over here and now I can ungroup these as I learn about the project. So that ungroup split up these parts. I'm gonna click on this one again. Notice it is grouped. And then I wanna hide this so you can see what happened down here. I just took this piece and I cut the center out. Now this is a sketch tool and I just sketched that circle, but I wanna highlight what I did down here with the stroke settings. Because I set it to 100, now when I click finish, bingo, we have got the flat circle for our project. If we go to this one, I'm gonna double click it. It's the exact same circle, but check out these stroke settings. I set it to the inside edge and a width of one and a half and see how that traces all the way around. So you can use one sketch again and again with all sorts of different strokes. All right, so there's how to tear them apart and learn from them. You can also check out the notes. I mentioned here these are for the 6mm Airsoft BBs, and this is the Snap Fit connector. Of course, I'm going to take this over here, and what we would do to send this to the 3D printer is simply grab it all, choose Export, and Export as an STL. I'm going to store it in my 3D modeling folder as Lazy Susan 2. There have been several versions as I've been fiddling with the project. Let's quickly bounce to Bamboo Studio, choose Create New Project, and let's add that file. Lazy Susan 2. 
I'm going to right click on it and I want to print it with my blue. Change filament, blue PLA. I'm going to use strength settings to make sure these are a little bit stronger. Let's hit slice plate and check it out. In an hour and a half, we will have an epic Lazy Susan. Simply hit print plate, double check our colors, and let's send it to the 3D printer. And let's check back in an hour and a half and see just what we made. All right, everybody, so here we are. This is our part. Zips in like that. Put in our little airsoft BBs. Once again, six millimeter airsoft BBs. This is our part with the grooves. Notice they follow those. How cool is that? Notice it snaps in and we're freaking good to go. If you want to scale it up, of course, you just follow the same technique, making sure that you got the airsoft BBs to hold it in place. Notice they are locked in there at the right height, so they will not fall out. So let's go back to the design for just a moment. I'm going to put a new note back here. I'm going to call this one V1. There's a chance we change this and make it even cooler. I will show you one adjustment I did make. If we go back to editing this and double click it, remember this shape is eight millimeters high. What I did to make this even smoother was I took these and I raised them up to six. This part plus the three millimeters of the ball on top matched the eight. And that's how easy it is to get these to line up. I will ungroup these just so you can see this really quick. Takes two ungroups to get to the bottom of it at the moment. What I did here was I just took a tube, which I guessed would fit the Airsoft BB pretty nice. Max the sides, put a bevel of 2 and 10 so that it's a bit rounded. And that's what cut the smooth groove that these roll in. And then also I trimmed this so that the fit was better. This is one of my favorite techniques. If we double click on this piece of sketch, this one, I took the stroke and I made it center line. And because I made it a width of four, it cuts away two millimeters, which made it so the project spins better. If I would have left it just at this size, it exactly matched. But by trimming it away, bingo, we've got the part that fits inside. Once again, putting these all back together, if I do control G, this way when you open the template, you've got everything lined up and can explore how the project works. One thing I want to note, I love using Sketch, that's why I built that, but this might be even smarter if you built two pillars with cones, so that way it would even print quicker. If you do make an adjustment or something smarter about this project, it would be so cool if you shared it with us. Let me show you the technique so that you can do it. Simply return to the Tinkercad dashboard, click up on the properties. Instead of private, make sure you make it public. And then if you want people to be able to mod it, make it share a like. If you want people to not be able to change it and just use your design as it is, set it to no derivatives. Of course, I want mine to be changeable, so I'm gonna leave it as share a like. Do also add tags to it. And I will note if you add the tag HLMT23, I check that tag every single day. And of course I will give you a reaction. I of course do want to highlight that this all started in my Patreon group. If you have not checked it out, there is a free chat area. And under design questions, this is the awesome project by Rochelle. We have had 91 answers about how to take this and make it in Tinkercad. Of course, I'm going to put the link to the project down below, but this is a fantastic way to ask questions and get a little bit of help as you build with Tinkercad. The one thing I do want to highlight, if you ever see these message deleted, that just means the user posted everything down here. Your first question goes down in this box, then you click on it and you move over to this side and down below is where you add all your images and the replies. Another huge benefit of the group is there's no algorithm that picks what you see. You can go through and check every project that's been submitted. Friends, I want to wrap up by saying thanks to Rochelle for the question. It has been a blast working on this project. I also want to say thank you to everybody that's supporting me via YouTube memberships. Don't forget there are three different levels of support starting as low as $5 a month. With any level of support, you get early access to videos. 
Of course, a super huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Love how that group is growing. As I highlighted a moment ago, the messaging area is absolutely fantastic. Of course, you can learn more with the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or click subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.